What's up, my beautiful Bruce? Beer Maniac here with another trade video. This trade flew underneath the radar, and with my busy schedule as of late, I didn't notice this, and I was not even alerted to it via my ESPN app, which I have tuned to let me know as soon as an MLB trade happens. But this one went right through the screens. I don't know how. Usually this doesn't happen. But, as you can see on the screen, the Oakland Athletics are making some more moves, which they are expected to make even more moves soon. They are trading, or they traded, Sunday, Ryan Madsen and Sean Doolittle for a combined salary of $5 million, which honestly is not that bad, considering one of them has a team option for 2019 and 2020, and they're both signed through 2018, so you can give them a two-year test run to see if they help out your ball pen. Now, let's see what this does here. You got a 77 and um, an 86. You got really good stats, vo decent velocity, good control, solid, amazing break, actually. This guy's breaks off the charts. It's a perfect 99. His velocity and control are freaking insane. But if you look at that, they instantly become top six relievers in the rotation for the Nationals. They are trading away Blake Trinan or Trainin or however you pronounce it. I, I apologize if I am pronouncing it incorrectly. Jesus Luzardo and third baseman Sheldon Noose, who are decent pro prospects, but that's what they are currently prospects. And the Nationals are in the role in the National League that they need to win now if they are going to hope to win a championship because they got a lot of teams they got to fight with. They got to fight with the Dodgers. They got to fight with the Cubs who are coming back after making some trades. Now, if you take a quick look at the roster, honestly, the Nats could use a better closer. Sean Kelly, who the hell are you? Look at their starting rotation. It is crazy. Tanner Roark has performed amazing, actually, this year so far. You have Gio Gonzalez, who's a solid option. He's been for quite a few years, actually. Max Scherzer, one of the best starters in the league. Some might even put him higher than Clayton Kershaw right now. You also have Steven Strasburg, who's been a really good starter, barring some injuries over the last half decade. You also got Joe Ross, another solid starter. All 83 are higher. That's an amazing, t amazing starting rotation right there, considering the consistency. But what lets them down, and what has let them down throughout the year so far, has been their bullpen, because they don't have a lot of depth, and even if they do, it's very inconsistent at the same time. Because you'll get a good outing, but then you'll have people like Blanton, who's rated good in this game, but he'll struggle every now and then, and the Nats, you need to have more good options to where if Blanton struggles, they can be like, okay, let's pull him out, let's put Doolittle in, Instead of being like, God, Blanton is our best option, hopefully he pulls it together. Now, if you look at the rest of the rotation here, they go Weeders at catcher, which is super good. Zimmerman just became the Nationals' leading home run hitter. You got Daniel Murphy, Anthony Rendon, Trey Turner, Jason Worth, Adam Eaton, Bryce Harper. And God damn, it's like one of the best lineups in baseball. Barring, I feel like Jason Worth is a little criminally underrated here. I think that has to do with his right-handed hitting, though. But you look at that lineup. It is one of the best offensive lineups in baseball. One of the best rotations in baseball. So with this pickup, you have them solidifying their bullpen, hopefully, to make a serious, serious, serious playoff push because they're going to need it when it comes to beating the Dodgers and Cubs. And what does this do for the Athletics, who are looking to be a good young team? It gives them a few prospects, which they can work with, see if they work out. If not, they may be able to trade prospect for prospect at some point, maybe in the offseason. And also, what they are looking to trade, as far as I am aware, they are looking to trade. Let's just wipe this trade out right real quick. Yonder Alonzo and Sonny Gray. They're actually looking to trade them. And they're thinking about trading them in a package to the Yankees. Which would be just absolutely bonkers. Considering the move the Yankees just did. And I actually just cover that in the video. What does this do for the Athletics? 
I think honestly it puts him on maybe a three year hiatus. The barring any amazing draft picks and free agent signings, I think they'll be relatively basement dwelling for the next few years. But they'll have the prospects that come three or four years time if they developed how they should. They should be a contender in that division again. All depending on how, like like I said, free agency and stuff like that works out. So, overall, this trade helps the Nationals now and gives the Athletics a more promising future than what they have now. Especially if they can manage to trade Sonny Gray and Yonder Alonso for even more prospects. And overall, their roster, it's looking really, really young. I mean, some of the oldest guys you have are Rajay Davis at 36, but other than that, if you're looking here, another 36, but almost all their roster is under 30, barring some people. And like I said, they just traded Madsen, so there's one of the older guys out the door. So it's a young roster. Like I said, maybe in a couple few years, they'll be amazing. They could be amazing next year or the year after if they have like a Corey Seager type player come through. Those are rare though, so we'll see. Anyway, sorry for skipping this trade. It did fly under the radar, but looking at it on paper, it's definitely a good trade for both teams. I love it. The Athletics are going nowhere where they are right now, and the Nationals are stuck where they are. So it, it gets the ball rolling, and I like it. I like it. Um, possibly I'll, I'll actually rate this trade an A-. minus. If it works out, it all depends because with relieving or with relief pitchers, it's hard to tell how they're going to perform going from one coast to the other. You got Oakland, California, then you move them to the capital, Washington, and then it's a different team, different coaches and stuff like that. It'll take a little while to adjust, but it should be good. Should be good. Anyway, guys. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe if you are new. Don't forget to share this with anybody else who likes baseball. And I'll try to cover as many trades as I can as I see them come through. I'm keeping alert maybe two, three times a day, barring work or stuff like that. I might miss a couple. So just let me know in the comment section down below, and I'll get that video out to you as soon as possible. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.